guys all start, and then I can take a few questions. Um, first of all, I've had a lot of family, friends, and friends text me to make sure I'm okay. Um, uh, I've had six negative tests since I was last with Kellen. I don't have any symptoms, so I don't have COVID. I've been feeling good, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, uh, you know, last time I was in a room with Kellen was, whatever, six days ago. Um, and I, I come to learn since I've been at home that uh, the, the tracers we wear actually showed I was I was not a close contact as I understand being a close contact which was within a certain number of feet. The challenge was the meeting room we met in was deemed to be too small for uh, us to have, have been in a room together even if we were significantly apart from each other. So we've since moved to a different meeting room. Uh, and I, as, I, as I understand it, had we met in a larger room, uh, I would not have missed practice because I was not a close contact as deemed by actually being in contact. So um, it was disappointing to miss practice. I've, in my entire college and pro career, I have not missed four practices. So to miss four practices in one week, um, you know, and not have COVID was was uh, you know, frustrating, disappointing, but. Um, you know, worked on my own, did all the virtual meetings, um, was able to do the best I could with the, with the situation we had. Um, you know, I do believe the protocols work, and that's why I believe I, I didn't have COVID, you know, after, after being in a meeting room like that, because the mask and the social distancing works. Um, so um, you know, now we, we look forward. Um, to the degree that you know you test positive for the virus, whether vaccinated or unvaccinated, you can't play in a game. You can't play in a game with COVID, regardless of your vaccination status. So the key will be not being a close contact. That will be the focus, and um, we have to be very vigilant to make sure that does not happen. Which is why moving to a larger meeting room uh, is is what's so important. And as I said to Coach Zimmer on the phone last night, I said we we can meet in the indoor. We can meet outside, and I said, if it means meeting outside under a goalpost in January, if that's what it takes to get to the playoffs and be in playoff games and win playoff games, and that's where we're going to meet. So um, we're going to avoid this close contact thing with everything we possibly can do. I was not aware of the meeting room size being an issue. Otherwise, I would have spoken up and said, we obviously can't meet here. Um, so I'm, I'm glad we've gotten that fixed and grateful that we have a facility where there are multiple options of where to meet. So uh, uh, with that, I'll take any any questions you, you may have. I'll take a few questions. Over the last five days, like, I mean, how involved did you feel you, you could be, all things considered? Well, it was very similar to uh, OTAs in 2020. Part of training camp in 2020 was spent virtual at home in the evenings. So uh, it's become a new normal. So it was very familiar from that standpoint. Part of our OTAs this spring was, was virtual. So you've learned what you gotta do to still stay focused. And then obviously on my own, you know, with recovery, it gave me a chance to get my hyperbaric chamber and spend some time recovering in other ways, do some brain training and do some tissue work. And so, uh, you know, I'm gonna maximize every hour I have, whether I'm at the facility or at home. Kirk, Kirk a lot of people changing. are saying, a lot of people are saying that as the quarterback, perhaps the most important player, this happening that you should be vaccinated? Are you giving consideration to be vaccinated? I think the vaccination decision is a private, very private health matter for me, and I'm going to keep it as such. Um, uh, I do believe that as a leader of the team, it's very important uh, to follow the protocols to avoid this close contact because that is that is what it's going to come down to is did you have a close contact? And so I'm going to be vigilant about avoiding a close contact. I've even thought about, should I just set up literally plexiglass around where I sit so that this could never happen again? Um, I thought about it, because I'm gonna do whatever it takes. So um, we're gonna avoid this close contact thing and I um, and, uh, look forward to uh, you know making sure I'm playing for every game this year. Are there so many other ways you can contract the virus rather than just Well, the protocols are what you have to follow. The NFL has set these protocols in place. so. Uh, I want to follow the protocol so I can play on Sunday, and that's where my focus is. So as long as I can, um, you know, not test positive and not have a close contact, I'll be there for every Correct, and, and uh, 
the NFL has, has encouraged us to get vaccinated. And as I said, it's just a very private health decision. And um, I'm going to keep it private as such. But Kirk, what puts me, you know, I, I get your rights, but it's also a, a whole team and a coach. And there, there's not a whole lot back up behind you that really should play. So how do you weigh that? Because it's, it's not just you. It's you playing for the Vikings, Zimmer, your teammates, the state. Like, how? Because your goal can be to, you know, stay away from people. But the reality is, this, this thing right now is, well, is catching like wildfire. I, I just don't know how, how you can be so confident that this is going to work. Uh, we can agree to disagree on that. We're very vigilant with the, uh, with the protocols. Uh, understanding that it is a private matter and you don't have to go through all the details of whatever decision that you come to, has it at least impacted your thinking having this practice? Uh, I'm taking into account everything that's happening and, and very much uh, doing my research and uh, trying to understand, you know, why I missed and then how to make sure it doesn't happen again. Mike Zimmer's been pretty perturbed, frustrated, just with a lot of people on this team who have not received the vaccine. How do you feel about your coach being as outspoken as he is? And I know you said you had a conversation with him. What, is he, what has his message been to you about the situation as the quarterback has been in and potentially face again? We had a tremendous conversation last night. Uh, great dialogue, and um, you know, I'll leave my discussion with him. With him, but it was a very, very positive discussion. Came away feeling great. But are things fine now then between you and Zimmer? Absolutely. So he, he said that, that you don't believe in protocol a couple of days ago. Can you elaborate on, on that? Like, are you following them and you don't believe in them, or what's your belief there? I very much believe in the protocols. Very aware of uh, you know what the protocols are, what the consequences are. Um, you know, and these protocols are a fluid situation, as so much of this COVID uh, period of time has been. We've already we got an email yesterday that basically said you know we're looking at changing the protocols. So there, there's there's very much a moving target. It's hard to say right now in early August what they will be by the end of this month or come October, come December. It, it's just such a fluid situation. Do you feel like the situation at the quarterback? Uh, we've moved meeting rooms, so it shouldn't happen again as far as the reason I was not uh, at practice. Uh, you mentioned that you wanted to do some additional research, that you thought some more about it over the years. How, how much in contact with Dr. Alan Sills have you been? Uh, I've never talked with Dr. Alan Sills personally. Are you believing up in those protocols that you think you can follow those close enough to dodge these bullets for 18 weeks in the playoffs? Well, the protocols work. Mass work. Social distancing works, and the um, 2020 season proved that. Kirkley Washington Post reported that the Vikings have the lowest vaccination rate in the NFL, 70% in the I think it's a fluid situation. I think it's changing daily. Kirk, you talk about following the protocols in the building. What then, when you're outside the building, do you have to do to, I guess, be this vigilant and make sure you don't get it? Social distance. And um, just understand who you're around and uh, understanding that um, it's not worth it to uh, potentially contract the virus. Is there anything you can... As it's been explained to me, and I'm still learning, but the time outside does not count the same way as inside. So it's it's really not a big issue outside. I'm told that because of the way it's an aerosol issue, that being outside uh, changes the conversation significantly. Are you concerned this will be a distraction, whether, whether or not it happens again? I mean, this is constant. Prior to that. Uh, I think it's a Tight-knit group, a lot of respect for one another. I don't think they should. Kirk, you mentioned just being vigilant. Do you think life would be easier if you just got the vaccine? Because a lot of those things that you have to be vigilant about wouldn't apply as much. 
you know, I'm, I'm at peace with uh, with where I'm at, and um, I'll, I'll follow the protocols vision.